Oh man, am I glad you stopped by. I was in the mood to talk about OTC and penny stocks, and voila, there you are. I love it. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, 12-12-2022. Now, I'm going to talk here and gab a little bit, bide some time so that you can jump into that OTC news that's scrolling over there. There is some great information to be found. Mergers, acquisitions, new technologies. There's six days worth of news in there, folks. Oldest is at the top, newest is on the bottom. It is in chronological order. Take your time and go through it. Honestly, that's the only reason I'm even talking right now is just to bide you some time to go through that. Now, we are going to be looking at stocks that are under five bucks. That's the literal definition of a penny stock, and they're on every single market, the OTC, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and wherever they may be, that's where we will go, as long as they're under five bucks. Now, when I'm doing research on an OTC stock specifically, this is where I go. This is my number one stop. This site is updated every single day for every single OTC stock by FINRA and the SEC. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks, I don't know of any other site online that does that. So this is a gold mine of information. All that news right there. I get it right here, right there in the news. Comes in all day long as it's happening in chronological order. And you can go back as far as you want and find all the news. Why run around the internet? I get all my filings here, my share structure here. Now, if there's something I need and I can't find here, well, of course, I'm going to go to Google. Otherwise, why go anywhere else? This is going to save you a lot of time and frustration. I promise. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. I'm going to give her a refresh here and hope for a bump. Come, baby, no bump, okay? Well, we have a low dollar volume of $1.4 billion. Got to get that up closer to two, three. Yeah, right. Share volume, we're at $7.5 billion. We're not rising. We're not falling. We're just kind of holding there, and that's a low number. The game really starts at around $10 billion. And our trades, well, as always, we are stuck between 250 and 300,000 shares. So nothing is really changing overall on the OTC market. Market. But thank God there's always stocks popping on their own accord. And I got a few I want to talk to you about and one you want to talk about. Let's jump into these. So we got a twofer here. There were a lot of companies that had good news today. Most of them had gains. But most of the news had to do with a deal with another company on the exchanges. So if you look at one ticker, you got to look at the other ticker too, don't you? So that's what we got here is a twofer. Two for the price of one. We're going to be looking at ticker GAME, Engine Gaming and Media Inc., as well as GMSQF, Game Square Esports. Now, Game Square Esports is on the OTC market. She's on the middle tier. They're at about 10 cents right now and had almost 71% gains. Game is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, and it is 10 times more expensive at $1.06, and they had virtually 100% gains today. Now, let's just start with the news so we're all on the same page, literally. <laughs> Game Square Esports and Engine Gaming and Media enter definitive arrangement agreement. The combination creates end-to-end -end digital media and a technology platform connecting global brands with gaming and youth culture audiences. And that's really what their main focus is on, that youth culture audiences. They tell us down here that Game Square Esports, ticker GM, SQF, and Engine Gaming Media, ticker GAME, have entered into a definitive arrangement agreement dated December 7th, 2022, to combine their businesses via an all share deal, whereby each common share of Game Square will be exchanged for about one tenth of a share of Engine Gaming. Remember, I said that. Ticker on OTC market was about one tenth this, so that's how they're exchanging the shares. So this is going to be the surviving ticker game. Both companies are coming over to here. Whatever shares you own of GMSQF, you're going to get one tenth of a share. So basically, you're going to get one share of game for every 10 shares you have of GMSQF. That's the way they have broken it down. It's not even one tenth, it is actually. 0.08262 if you want to get specific. 
They go on to tell us that the combined company integrates GameSquare's award-winning content, advertiser, and influencer businesses with Engine's market-leading data, analytics, advertising, and marketing technology platforms. The transaction creates a market-leading end-to-end platform which reaches across esports, sports, influencer, publisher, and advertising networks for brands to connect with the increasingly difficult to reach youth culture audiences. Now there is a lot more information here. They got details after details about the deal and all sorts of stuff. So if you really want to get into it, this is where you can get that information. So what was the relative volume around game today? Well, almost 10 times, is that 10 or 100? I think that's almost 100, so it's like probably 90 times her normal volume. She jumped from 39,000 to 3.5 million. That's a lot of extra attention. Share structure. All right, I did go look this one up. It was not listed in the financial. Google tells us that it is 15 million, which is a really nice float. Now, to be honest, I don't know if the share structure is gonna change when they bring in this other company. I don't know, but right now we're sitting at 15 million. Financials for game. All right, at the end of their fiscal year, they did just a little over $37 million. We know it's millions because they tell us to take these three zeros and put them behind any of the numbers down here. And look at that. Cost of revenue, nada. So they got to keep 100%. They got to keep all $37 million. You got to love that. That's what you get with a digital business. Quarterly, uh uh-oh, we got nothing coming in this year. That is a bit concerning. Let's take a look at our disclosures. We got a lot of 6Ks here. This is normally where you'll find news. We had one come out on Friday. Let's jump on into that, see what it tells us. Normally don't have to scroll down too far. GameSquare Esports and Engine Gaming Media enter definitive arrangement agreement. Right. There is one other piece of news we need to let you in on here. The arrangement is anticipated to close in the first quarter of 2023. So that basically catches us up with everything going on with game. So let's take a look at GMSQF. Now, there is a lot of good things to say about this company. Look at all those green ticks over here. Green ticks are good. You got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified. There is a lot of information that's being validated behind the scenes about this company. And that's what these two green ticks verify that they passed. They've also got independent directors. This gives you a bit of insight to their mindset. You only need independent directors unless you're thinking about uplisting. And here's a bonus for you. They're penny stock exempt. This should reassure you. What it basically means is that they're not a startup company. They're not risky like that. What it literally means is that they've been in business for three to five years and have had millions of dollars of assets during that time period with no problems with their financials or filings. As I said, it should reassure you. So her volume today, pretty strong, jumped from 137,000 to 1.5 million. Not as much as the last company, but there is a lot of excitement built up around this. Share structure. Now this isn't going to make a whole lot of matter because they are being swallowed up. Well, I shouldn't say they're being swallowed up. The two are merging. They're getting married. And this one is just moving out of his apartment and moving into her place. Hope I got the genders right there. But currently, and I couldn't find this float in the financials, but it seems to be between 102 and 147 million shares, if it matters to you. Financials for this company. Well, they are making money. At the end of last year, they did almost $11 million and they got to keep 3.5. It cost them $7.3 million doing their business. Quarterly, oh, they're pouring on the heat, aren't they? Look at this. First quarter of this year, they did half of all they did last year, $5 million. Second quarter, they kicked it up to 6.6 million. And look at that. Third quarter of this year, they have virtually done as much as they did all last year. So they are picking up momentum. Disclosures for this company. Well, they're all caught up on their financials and we've got no SEC filings whatsoever here. And we've already looked at the news. So let's go take a look at those charts. All right, we're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is the free trading platform that TD Ameritrade gives you when you sign up for their free trading account. And all we got to do to use it is keep our accounts open. That's it.
So we've got both tickers up here, GAME and GMSQF. We're going to go ahead and look at the NASDAQ stock first, GAME. This is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble six months ago of $2.26. And in September, she hit 50 cents. And right now we are double that at $1.06. She has been under the 200 all of this time. She did have a couple breakthroughs, but couldn't hold them until today. She didn't just break through. She rocketed past, and it looks like she's still climbing after market hours. Lots of volume today, and look at our technicals. Every single one of them is pointing up and on fire. RSI is clear up here at 78. MACD is blowing the beach away. That is a tsunami. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is just skyrocketing, and our ADX, I kind of like this tool. It's simple. It's not about if it's pointing up or pointing down. It's just, is it going the same direction? If it is still going the same direction, it means your trend on the chart's going the same direction. Well, that hasn't changed and it's been climbing. So it looks like it wants to continue climbing. Four hour chart looks pretty hot to me. One hour, 20 day. All right, she was lazy for 19 days underneath that 200 until today. Actually had a late start before she took off. Looks like she hit a high of $1.24 here before she fell back. And all of our technicals are just as blazing on the one hour as they were the four hour. Five day, five minute flat as a pancake really and then about uh who what is that about 11 30 she started to grow hit that high late in the day at uh 20 to 4 and then fell down and has leveled right off on her nine day sma and is consolidating looks really good folks looks like she wants to continue to grow now all of our technicals show that she was hot and is cooling off right now but i wouldn't give up on this one at all this is the surviving entity all the shares that you buy in this stock gmsqf are going to be moved over to game at roughly one to 11 shares i guess that's probably closer to it for every 11 shares you own of this company you'll get one share of this company now you're probably asking yourself a question which one's the better one to buy then should i buy game or should i buy gmsqf well, right now it's pretty close. This one is one tenth of the price of this one and they've already determined what the values are. So what happens now is aftermath. So if you could get a price divergence, if this would actually fall instead of climbing, you would wanna buy this one because you'd be getting more out of the deal when they kick you over to the other shares. But as this climbs, they pretty much stay right around themselves. It could surpass it and you could actually lose. So it's very difficult to tell. The bottom line is though, you're getting two companies that are very good at what they do, working together, getting a synergy and making more money. So this is our six month, four hour chart for GMSQF. She had her high here of almost 20 cents. That was in August, August 15th. And just a couple of days ago, she had her low of four and a half cents. And right now we are sitting at almost 10 cents, just about 10 cents. This company's had more volume than the other company has by a long shot, and the volume has grown here, and she has broken the 200, but it doesn't look like she's holding over. Yes, she is. We are right about there. Yeah, we are. Sometimes that uh, doesn't actually show us where the price finished. A lot of times it's down here, but we are over the 200 right now with a big push of volume. And our PPO, whoa, look at that turn, and she's just about ready to cross over just like the MACD does. Speaking of the MACD, it's about ready to cross the signal line. Two signals that show us strength right around the corner. Look at that RSI. Boy, that is a bullet straight up to the overbought, and it is at 69 and a half right now. Everything looks really good on the four hour. Let's come down to that 20 day, one hour view. Well, she was rolling around her 200. She was actually doing more than the other stock. And today she did take off. Technicals still show a lot of strength. Whoa, they really do show a lot of strength on the one hour. It's pretty impressive. Five day, five minute. Again, we had a late start here. She started to climb 
Uh, ooh, this one was much later. This is like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It started to climb. And this one gave us a 70% gain, where game gave us a 100% gain. Either way, though, those are some real solid gains. You can see all the volume came in here, pushed it up. She's holding her price up here. She had a little dip after hitting the high bubble. You'll see this very often. As soon as a high bubble pops up on your chart, there's a pullback. It's not a fall, it's just people feel they hit the ceiling. So they gotta take a step back, look and say, oh, we can go now. And then it continues going, which is exactly what it looks like it's doing. Sitting on her nine day SMA, she is not below it, everything looks solid. Our technicals, our PPO is pushing up, our ADX did have a little bend. You see the change in direction right there? That was right there as she was falling and now she's straightened back out for her rise. MACD looks really strong and God, man, the RSI has been red the entire time. I like both. I like game. I like GMSQF. I think they're both worth a watch. Uh, maybe you want to get into both of them. All your shares will be consolidated once it's all over, right? And it will be the first quarter of 2023. So we have a lot of time, folks. There's still anywhere from one to three months before this could be closed. So we could see a lot of price activity. Both. Next ticker we're taking a look at, it's a twofer as well. This is ticker YCRM, Ulings Ice Cream Corporation. Finished the day at about a penny and a half with almost 68% gains on the pink tier and current looks good. They had news come out today. They cut a deal with another company on the OTC market, GPO Plus, with ticker GPOX. They finished the day at just a little over 20 and a half cents with only 3% gains. On the middle tier of the OTC and got all their green ticks will look really good. Now, Yuling's Ice Cream, they just came on the market earlier this year, got their ticker in May, but this company's been around for a very long time. They've been making beer for over 100 years, but when Prohibition came along, they had to stop making beer, and they started making ice cream. That's a nice replacement. Then Prohibition ended. They started making beers again. Well, it was about 1950s, 1960s, somewhere in there, they quit making the ice cream just stopped. Everybody was loving it and they gave it up. But the beer continued on. So if the name sounds familiar to you, that's probably where you've heard it from, is their beer. Well, they plan on relaunching the ice cream in 2023 and they just went and made this deal with G-Pox to create some interesting ice cream flavors for them. They tell us here in the news that Euling's Ice Cream announces an exclusive licensing agreement with GPO Plus to produce Euling's Ice Cream flavored CBD and candy cannabinoid products. GPOX will develop a full line of CBD and other hemp-derived cannabinoid products based on the iconic flavors of Euling's ice cream. They tell us here that they plan to relaunch Euling's ice cream in the spring of 2023. Now, GPO Plus is not just using CBDs. They're using anything that's been approved by the government through the Farm Hemp Bill. So they are using Delta 8, 9, 10, a variety of different types of THCs, HHC, not sure what that one is, and Kratom. So they've got a lot of different products that they're going to be putting on the markets. Now, who exactly is GPO Plus? They tell us here that GPO Plus is a brand creation and distribution company focused on independent and regional retailers, the stores, and they have an ever-growing product catalog that uses the power of group purchasing to save businesses money. You can kind of think of it as like uh, Sam's Club. You know, we pay to get in there and we get better prices for the stuff we buy. Well, this is for the stores. And rather than going in a store to buy it, they get this huge catalog and all these retailers are members of GPO Plus's catalog purchases. So that's how they save money. And that's where Euling's products are going to be going. Taking a look at the volume. Ooh, she did pretty good today. She jumped from 68,000 to 3.5 million. That is a humongous jump. Share structure, had to do some homework here, but bottom line is she does have 15.5 million in the float, which is also the outstanding share count. Financials, well, you will see some money on the books for the last few years, but that wasn't Ulings, that was the other company. Ulings actually has nothing on the books yet. They haven't started selling anything. Disclosures for this company. Well, I don't think they have anything recent. No, their most recent 8K was a couple months ago. So let's take a look at GPOX now. 
What was the relative volume around GPOX today? Oh, well, that's surprising. It fell, fell by almost 50%, went from 148,000 shares down to 65,000 shares. Very interesting. I guess people chose the other company to put their money in instead of this one. Hmm. Share structure. What do we got over here? Oh, I did look this one up too. Thank God. This is 20 million in the float. Not a bad float. Both of these are looking pretty darn good when it comes to floats. This one's making money at the end of, uh, ooh, is that? All right. So it looks like April is the end of their fiscal year. So April of this year, they had done $1.1 million, but only got to keep $18,000. Ooh, they got to work on that formula. Quarterly, well, they're making money. They did $64,000 in the last quarter and they got to keep 20,000 of it. Well, that's better. That's 33%. At least they're getting to keep some of that money. Disclosures, got anything current over here? Uh, yeah, we do as a matter of fact. We're not gonna jump into it, but they just came out with a quarterly financial on Friday. So if you wanna really get all the information, your quarterlies and your 10Ks, they have a lot more information than your disclosures. So I'm sure that won't disappoint you. All right, that looks to be everything we really got for GPOX and for YCRM. Let's go check out the charts. All right, I got both tickers up for us, and we're gonna start off with Yuling's Ice Cream first, ticker YCRM. This is a six month, four hour chart, but it starts on September 6th, which is when their ticker went live. I thought it was May, I had that wrong. It was in September, they hit a high of almost three cents at uh, 2.97 cents, and in mid-October, 45 days later, they hit double zero one. Folks, that is almost 3,000% drop. And in that same day, it bounced off that low and came right back up almost 900%. And she has been sitting right around that area all this time until the last couple of days when all the volume has come in and she started climbing. All of our technicals are real strong right now. All of them are pushing up, though we have had just a slight pullback on the RSI. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. As I said, nothing going on except for the last two days. Three days ago, we hit that low bubble that everything is, seems to be bouncing off of right now. Technicals are still strong, but they do show signs of cooling off right now. Five day, five minute. All right, so we hit that low bubble, had a nice bounce, came down. Looks like she kept a little less than 50% of what she threw on the table. You draw a line at the bottom of the surge, a line at the top, find the middle. If it's under it, eh, chances are it's probably gonna to continue to fall. Now over here, we got another surge. Let's take a look. There's the bottom of the surge. There's the top of the surge. I'm just eyeballing it. Close enough is good enough. And we're looking to see that everything she put on the table, the price keeps at least half of it. Oh, we're right there, aren't we? Right there. Now it doesn't matter if it's on top or underneath. As long as it's on that line, we're feeling good. There's an eight out of 10 chance she's gonna hang there and continue to go up. It's not a guarantee, it's just a stronger likelihood. So she's sitting there, technicals are not agreeing with us. We've got our blue PPO pointing down just a little, but you can see it, and our ADX is pointing up. Well, when you see those two coming closer and closer together, guaranteed the price is gonna fall. And it works exactly the opposite. If the blue line is pushing away from the red and they're both doing that, your price is going up. So right now, it looks like it wants to fall. The MACD is in agreement, it is falling, as well as the RSI. Let's take a look at GPOX now, see if it's doing anything better. She had a huge jump here. This was back at the very end of September. She was at 21 cents and went to $2.10. Folks, that is exactly 1,000% gains. And I don't know, what is that, 10 days, 14 days? And then she gave it all away. Look at that. It looks like a huge teepee just sitting on the prairie. And the price is still falling. Volume is getting less and less and our technical show she is continually falling. Let's come in on that 20 day one hour view. Well, not a lot to say. She's way under her 200. She was above the 50 day at a price of 45. Slipped, has gotten under the 50 day SMA, hit a low here of 18 cents. That is a 66% drop in the last 20 days and it looks like she is still continuing to fall. All of our technicals look very weak. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. 
Not anything to get excited about. Everything is slowly, just very slowly drooping down and pushing down. And here we go again. Look at our PPO. It is curving down and our ADX is curving up. That means the price wants to come down some more. MACD is falling under the signal line and our RSI is pushing down as well. Looks like both of them initially want to fall. I would think that YCRM is going to jump more now to tell you which one is gonna come out ahead in this deal, I mean, who's gonna make more money? We really don't know, do we? They didn't give us all that information. No financials about who gets what. So we are in the dark on that particular. However, I think Ulings is probably gonna bounce before uh, GPOX. That doesn't look to be bouncing at all. All right, I got one more stock to talk to you about and I know you wanna talk about it. HNRC. No, I didn't forget about HNRC. I just wanted to share another twofer with you. We don't have enough time to talk about it, but I want to drop it in your lap and I'll let you pick up the ball from there. This is ticker ELRA, L Ray Resources, finished the day at 001, the best buy price in my book, at 25% gains. Well, they had news today. L Ray Resources Inc. acquires online casino crypto technology. So they got some intellectual property. Now they've taken this new property that they've got and they went and made a deal with GMGI, Golden Matrix. Golden Matrix makes casino games. They give you this big old package. They white label them so they can sell them to any company. All they do is plug them in and we play them. Just that easy. And L Ray is going to incorporate their crypto technology to create online crypto casinos. Now, crypto casinos are nothing new, but they are a big deal. Would you believe that 60% of all Bitcoin transferred is transferred for gambling purposes? It's a fact. Check it out. Also, check out these tickers E L R A and G M G I. Now, let's take a look at HNRC. HNRC, Houston Natural Resource Corporation, finished the day at 50 cents with about 2% gains. Now, most of us really aren't watching the gains. I mean, we would like to see it go up, that's great. But I think most of us want it to stay down because we're trying to acquire more shares. This company has given us a dividend. They're doing a spin out of WDHI of all their non-energy assets worth about 53 million and they're giving us a dividend of $1.75 for every share you own. That's right, shares are 50 cents and they're gonna give you $1.75 for every share you own. Now they're not gonna give us money, they're gonna give us shares. They're gonna give us shares in WDHI which is going on to the major exchange. Shares are supposed to be at $5 from what I understand. So whatever equates out to, that's how many shares you'll get for your $1.75 per share of HNRC. Now the reason we're looking at this, a lot of people want to dump all their stock. They want to sell their HNRC after the 14th. The 14th is the cutoff for buying shares that qualify for dividends. The actual record date is the 16th. So you're going to see that date. That means that they are going to look at whoever owns stock on the 16th and they're going to record it. Well, it takes two days for it to get recorded. So if you buy it on the 15th or the 16th, you're not going to be qualified. But anything up to the 14th will qualify. Now, this is what I really want to do. I want to look at both companies as best we can, just a little bit. HNRC has got value. They've got a lot of things they're working on with energy. They're working with Cunningham Oil right now, which is bringing quite a lot of revenues to them. They've got a lot of solid fundamentals, HNRC does. And the information on them is pretty easy to find. What's more difficult to find is information on WDHI. What are they gonna be doing? What's going to be their business? What sector are they going to be in? What are their plans for the future? It's kind of tough to know without them telling us anything. And this is the reason it's important. Most of us want to sell our dividends as soon as we get them. As soon as that ticker gets up on the market, we want to get our money. Well, folks, there's a lot of people thinking that. And what's going to happen if everybody starts to sell at the same time? That's right, the price is going to fall and you're going to get less than $1.75 as it's falling. Now the chances are, once all those people sell their dividends, it's going to start coming back up and could easily pass $5 and become worth even more. So you may be making a mistake selling too quickly. But 
you'd like to have a little bit of information about what's going on with WDHI. So I went running around this weekend and I couldn't find a lot, but I can share some with you so that you at least have an inkling of what's going on. Now I've posted all of my information over at Twitter, so it's real easy to find. So the first place we can start is from one of their news presses. Now the company deals in energy. They've got $60 million in assets with about 33 million barrels of oil in the ground and they've got the property. But what the company really does is they spin out energy SPACs and give dividends to their shareholders. This comes from one of their news presses. The company sponsored a successful $86 million New York Stock Exchange listing of an energy-focused SPAC during the first quarter of 2022. The company is currently focused on a second energy-focused SPAC to be listed in 2022 and currently evaluating six other SPAC opportunities. This strategy will result in a dividend to its shareholders on each of the SPAC investments. Imagine that you're getting free shares in every company that they spin out. Nice company to hold shares in, wouldn't you think? This would provide for quarterly dividends through 2023 to 2024 and probably a 30 cent annual dividend. And right now we're getting a $1.75 dividend for the WDHI spin out. They love to give their shareholders dividends and money. Why would you want to leave a company like that? Now let's take a look at WDHI. There's not a lot to be known about it, but I did some digging around and I found a few tidbits that may help us. First off, they do have a website, WDHINC.net. And would you believe that HNRC changed their name and ticker from World Diversified Holdings? That's what they used to be. Back here in June 29, 2020 was the last day of trading for the ticker WNTR, World Diversified Holdings. They changed that ticker to HNRC. Now here's a couple pieces of information I found. They tell us that the portfolio of the companies that Worldwide Diversified Holdings is gonna hold, their investments are in information technology and healthcare. So at least we have an idea now what they're pointed towards. And we also learn about their focus, what their plans are. Not a lot, but a little goes a long way. The company is focused on using a public trading vehicle to acquire ownership positions in small to middle market companies over the next three years. The operations will provide for income from adversary services, interest dividends, and capital gains from investments in public and private companies and diversified industries worldwide. So there you go, folks. There's not a lot to know, but you got one company that wants to give you dividends all the time. You got another company here that we're going to get a dividend on. And I'm sure as soon as it hits the market, it is going to fall. People are going to sell their dividends. The price is going to fall. And then it's probably going to bounce back up and even go higher than five bucks. And all those people that sold early are going to feel cheated because they were impatient. The more you know, the more you're going to grow, right? All right, let's go check out the chart for HNRC. So we are looking at HNRC. This is my six month, four hour chart. You can see I've got a triangle drawn here. My channel's top and bottom. Price got locked in there and I was waiting for it to break out and boom, there it was. It broke right out, did come back in, but it jumped right back out and it looks like it wants to continue to climb away. Our volume, look at that, has been steadily increasing all the way along and our PPO and our ADX are doing that spread apart like that. So that assures me the price is growing as well. MACD isn't hurting, that's pushing up and our RSI is pushing up as well. Let's take a look at our five day, five minute. So there's the top of our channel. She did come back in and pushed right back out. She then tested it, bounced on it, bounced on it, and now is starting to push away, is above the 200-day SMA and has been consolidating uh, about an hour of today. Our technicals, oh boy, they show a lot of heat. Our PPO is pushing up and our ADX. Now it's okay if the ADX and the PPO both go up. I'm just saying that that is an easy pattern to see. But both look good right now. Our MACD is strong, but it looks like it's about ready to be tested. 
And our RSI has just fallen out of the overbought, but it's still high at 66. Now, I don't know if this is going to run. I think in the next two days, we've only got two days left to buy shares of this company to get $1.75 for every share you own, folks. That is a great dividend. Well, that could be a motivating factor. That could be a catalyst. This stock could run in the next two days. I don't know if it's going to, but if people realize we've only got two days left to get $1.75 for every 50 cents you invest, there could be a wild surge. And if you're trying to accumulate shares, you may want to buy them before they start to run. Just a thought. Yeah, it was a slow day on the OTC market, but there's always stocks jumping and there's lots of news. And did you see how many twofers there were today? Companies doing deals with each other, both of them on the markets. There's lots of plays out there. Due diligence is going to show you way more than I'm ever going to show you folks, but I'm happy to share with you. But remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.